Hi friend, I hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna to install a 50 amp service into my shed. It's a 12 by 24 shed. Sorry for the quick interjection, but I had to stop for a second. I'm outside testing the Predator 9500 generator. I had to stop to tell you guys thank you. Sincerely, from me to you, from the bottom of my heart, for all the interaction, the comments, whether you've been here for a while, Nick Pixel TV, or you're just, you're just starting on the channel, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to create videos for you. This has truly been a blessing in my life. Your friendships, the friendships that we've made just all across the board, I wanted to take a second to tell you thanks. I, I had some ideas for 5,000 subscribers and then it just went past that. So I am working on some things that'll be helpful for you guys and, and definitely something that I wanna do to give back on the channel. We do have some tests going on. We have some electrical connections that we're gonna make and, and definitely show that because there were some questions there. There was questions on wiring this to your house and how you can do that with a transfer switch. There's been some great questions. I did pick up a whiteboard so that I can maybe outline things a little easier. This video was filmed a while back, uh, right before I was getting ready to start this project. I needed some more power to run my welder and a couple things I also wanted a home backup. So it, it's all coming together now. I just wanted to pop in this video. I hope you enjoy it. Don't follow everything verbatim. You know, I do interchange some words like wiring, uh, conductors, and things like that. So it's not a, the gospel of electrical by any means, but it might give you some, uh, spark some thoughts on how you can wire your outbuildings, how you can do it. Have an electrician come over, maybe double check your work. Maybe you could save a few dollars getting things going. But I wanted to more importantly just stop in and say thank you. So enjoy the video, and we'll be back with some more follow ups on the generator as you guys have asked. And I thank you for all of your time here. Appreciate you. That I brought here about five years ago. It was a temporary solution until I could build a garage, and that hasn't happened yet. And over the years, I've added more and more to the shed. Initially, I brought out a 30 amp service, which is behind me here, just to run my plugs and my lighting in here. I split that out into two 15 amp breakers, and that was good enough for the time being. I could run my 110 welder that my dad and I shared for a long time. Now I have more projects going on. I did pick up the Multimatic 220 Miller recently and i want to get into some 220 work i also got a heater that my dad gave me for free so we want to be able to run the heater and we'll run the welder when needed and things like that so today we're going to install this get this going i'll, I'll give you guys the highlights i'm not a certified electrician by any means maybe youtube certified but uh not an electric not an electrician just know a little bit about electrical so hopefully this serves as a, a helpful guide if you're thinking about running service i would recommend that you run more than what you need or a heavier wire to your prop, your to your shed or to your outbuilding, whatever you need to do, um, always go up because in this case I'm redoing it again for the second time. You know, with electrical, measure once and cut twice. All right, let's get this started. I'm gonna spare you the uh, some of the building here. We'll cut right into it. I just uh, scabbed up this two by four, and we're gonna put uh, a little mount here so that we can mount our service panel. When you have a service panel. Uh, at 50 amps, there's some guides online that will help you decide what size wire you need. For today's video, we're going to be using 6.3 wire that's going to be running out from my hot tub service that I have. So I have a 50 amp breaker inside, and then this, this wire will run out. I'm going to tee it off my hot tub because we don't use the hot tub very often uh, anymore, as much, I would say. We're going to start in here and work our way back to the house. My house sits about, it's probably about 60 some feet of wire, so you got to consider your voltage drop in those scenarios i think they want you to be under five i think it's five percent voltage drop this should be at 110 it should be somewhere in the three and then one and a half or 1.7 you know two percent at 220 but at any rate we got six three wire here i got some uh, other wire for internal wiring here in the shed we're going to put two plugs in very similar to this here so these 50 these are 50 amp plugs we'll uh show you those real quick we're going to pop these in Real fast, we're gonna have one plug for the uh, electric heater, which here's the electric heater that we're gonna use. I don't know if I can bring that up there. So hopefully that works. And um, we'll get that installed. We'll get these plugs installed. And we should be able, when we're all said and done, we'll probably run a 40 amp breaker and a 30 amp breaker, and we should be able to, to run them if needed. And I'll just have to consider my power usage overall because inside my house, I only have a 100 amp service. But everything's you know protected as you go. So if we go over over the pool, it's gonna pop a breaker. I'm gonna throw these two by fours in place just to hold the panel. This way, I'm not drilling through my T111 on the outside. With this box here, I was able to mount it to the side of the two by four. Same with the plug. But we'll get this popped in here, get this leveled up. You're not gonna see this, and like I said, it's all it's all temporary. We're gonna use these GRK fasteners with the rubber seal. 
I'm not sure if you can see that for the electrical panel. Not that any water gets in here, but this is locked down. Throw this in here. Try to make it even. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, so I hope you can see this panel all right. All we did was install it to the wall with the three uh, GRK fasteners with the rubber seals. So now we're ready to go. This is right out of the box. This is how you're gonna get this, these panels. What you're gonna notice is you're gonna have these couple lugs here where your main wires connect to. So we're gonna bring 6-3 into this with a ground, meaning there's three conductors. So your three conductors are gonna be black, a red, and then a white. And a lot of times where people get confused is where do you put the ground? A lot of times people will put the ground up here. The ground, you actually have to buy a separate ground bar on a sub panel. So we're gonna install that either down in the left corner here or the right corner, they give you an area for that. And that's where your ground wire go, your bare copper wire. So you're gonna have white, red, black, and that's gonna be good to go. And you'll see that all these are alternating. So you can see these tabs. When you pop a breaker in here, a double pull breaker is gonna pull from each one of those two tabs. So you're getting one leg, 120, the other leg, 120, and that's how you're gonna get your 220, 240 service, however you wanna call that. And then out of this breaker will be the rest of your wiring. We'll talk about that here shortly. But we're gonna get this ground bus bar installed so that we have room for the ground, and then we're gonna bring the 6-3 wire into here. And then as with any electrical, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all of your connections are tight. So now we have our ground lug for our ground wires. All right, friends, so we have made a little bit of progress. It's a very, very windy day. It's the next day now. I got tied up yesterday. My nephew came back over, chess man. Of course, he had to do the fire camping. So we went out and I just stopped what I was doing. We built a fire and had a little bit of fun. So I only, he was only here for like two hours. But I did get a couple things done last night. I was just putts around the shop. I thought it would clear things up, maybe make things a little easier. I wanted to give a little shout out to Matt Comar. Congrats on your first video, buddy, on your channel. And little Hunter, Hunter, if you're listening, I hope you're doing well, buddy. And it's great to see you working with your dad and keep working with your dad, man. He's having a blast. You guys are gonna make some fun videos. And I thank you for the kind words that you said in your video. That, to me, is what this is all about. So if I can help somebody in my videos, whether it be you know with a project or just, just life in general, that's what I try to do. I get a lot of inspiration from you guys as well. So keep hammering, guys. And uh, Hunter, take care of your dad, man. He's having fun. So listen, here's what we did. I got a couple things done yesterday. I mounted the 6-3 wire. I got it run through the floor. Got that done. This isn't hooked up yet. It's just laying in my yard right now. I got to run it over to the house and get that tied up. But... um. What we got here, this, this should clear it up. I did move the ground bus bar from the left side to the right side. I didn't want to cut these wires because at five bucks a foot, this is just temporary. So we got the ground bus bar in over here. We got the ground connected to it. Then we have your two, uh, well, your three wires that come up through here. So you got your hot, your black on this bar. We got our red on this bar down here. And then we got our common wire, our, our neutral common right here. So this is gonna be used if we're, if we're using like 120. With 220 circuits, you're not gonna need uh, the, the white wire, I guess, for, for lack of better terms. Um, so this wire here is what runs to our heater. I ran this across just to save some time. I'll show you where the heater's gonna go. We'll get the plugs wired in. We'll get the rest of this box put together. We'll get the breakers put in and get that done. All right, so as you can see, I just punched these, these holes out here. You always work with the smaller hole first and we'll work your way out. So these are three quarters of an inch. We got these two connectors here to run our wires in. So this one here is gonna punch, and th these are the clip-in style. So these are gonna clip right in. You can see that one clipped in there. And that one clipped in there. All right, so what I did here is I just stripped this wire. This is a 10-2 wire, so two conductor and a ground. So we're gonna bring this wire in here because with 220 to 240 volts, whatever you want to call it, you're not going to need a common wire. We've got a number 10 wire coming up here for our heater. This is 10-2, so it means two conductors that can run at full load. We've got our ground, so we're going to bury our ground, and I'm going to pull these wires out and run the ground behind everything just to get it out of the way. All right, run that in back in here. Grab a screwdriver, flat screwdriver here. We'll tighten that down. 
All right, so that's tight. Our ground's in. Now we have our breaker, 30 amp breaker. And that's the go. We'll just put that on this side to keep it out of the way. I'm going to run these wires down just to keep them. I'm not going to cut them right now because, like I said, this is all temporary. So we'll cut these two even. We're going to open up our breaker here. Want to make sure all your connections are tight. Alright, so those are tight. Move this down. We're going to plug in our breaker. Boom. Alright, so that one's done. I'm sure there's electricians in here. You could take maybe a piece of a red electrical tape and we can just flag that to know that that's a hot wire. We could do that on the other side so that people know that that's a hot wire. But in 220, that's what you're going to use. If this was a 120 circuit and you had a single pool breaker in here, basically you're going to have a ground wire to the ground bus bar. You're going to have a black wire into the breaker and then you're going to run your white wire up here. So for right now, for this case, for the heater, we're going to do a white wire, black wire. Those are snug and secure. That's tightened into the breaker. That one's done there. Now we're going to bring our service in for our welder, which is a 40 amp breaker. So we're going to get down to number eight wire. All right, so I stripped down our number eight wire. Now, this is 8.3, you're really only going to need 8.2, but our store only had 8.3 for the pre-cut that I wanted, so I'm going to use 8.3, and I'm just going to take this white wire, cap it off, and leave it out, but really for this job, we're just going to use the black wire, the red wire, and the ground wire. So you always want to check your wiring, have a meter, make sure you're checking your wiring out, that you're doing it right, but for this case, we're not going to need the common wire, which is the white wire, and we're just going to use the red and the black. If you want to keep it all consistent, you could use the white wire and the black wire and not use the red. But we got this here. I'm going to move our ground over. And I'm going to tie that into our ground bus bar. Of course, this could be cleaner if I wanted to shorten the wires. Usually, you're going to keep it as close as you can, the shortest run possible. Clean and nice as best you can. This is all temporary for me, so... Nothing crazy. I'm sure there's going to be suggestions. This white wire, we just cap this off. This is going to just going to sit here because we don't need this white wire at all. It's not going to be used. So we're just going to let that sit there. We've got our two hot leads for our 40 amp breaker with our number eight. Everything's tied in the ground. Everything's tight and uh, correct. So what we're going to do is we'll cut this just a tad bit shorter. And we'll get this breaker connected. Keep those leads as even as we can and we can we can play around with them and move them a, a tad bit if, if needed and we're going to bring our red side in and then tighten it down all right so i'm gonna bring you up a little closer to show you what we did here so we have our main service coming in we have a hot lead here a hot lead coming down here we have our common up here then we have our first breaker in with our hot lead another hot lead that's our 220 for our heater which runs down to this here and then we have our hot lead and our hot lead on this 40 amp breaker coming down here and this is going to go to our plug so then out of these two we'll go to our plugs everything's good to go here our service is in make sure all your connections are tight i like to leave my breakers off i'm just going to put our welder plug somewhere on this wall for now We'll just get an idea where we want it and how much wire we're going to need, just for worst case. Right there. Get that out of the way. We'll strip about what we need here for the box. So we take this here, just twist this out, like so. All right, so we got our connector on here now. Now these are 50 amp plugs, they're rated up to 50 amps, but our circuit's only 40 amps, so the plug should be fine. We're going to run our wire through here. So if you remember on this plug, we're not using our white wire, so I'm just going to tape that off. Just to show that it's not being used. So we're going to end strip with our ground. I cut the ground a little bit shorter just to fit into the plug. 
We'll bring this down. Like I said, I do like to connect the ground first. We got our hot, our hot, our ground, ready to rock and roll. Our white wire is not being used, so I'm just bending this out of the way for now. It's not going to touch anything. I'm going to tighten down our connectors here at the top, set it up against the wall for our welder. I'm going to put it on the outside as much as I can. And we're going to bring in one screw there. Got one there. And one in the back. Our last step is to pop on our cover. Boom! And now our welding circuit's ready to go. And last but not least, we'll throw our plug cover on. We got our heater. Hopefully it works. Run to our plug there. That's all plugged in. And then over here we have our plug for our welder. And we're all good to go in the box. Hey, hon, you down in the basement? Yes. All right, do you see that breaker that says 50 amps on the right-hand side? It's the only one that's off? Yes. Okay. So you ready to flip that on? Yep. All right, go ahead. I felt it. I felt it. All right, so we have power. Let's see if we... Power. Power. These two are off. Let's check these here. Let's go with the welder circuit first. We got power. We got power. And let's go with the heater circuit, which we'll see if the heater works then. Good. 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 All right. So we'll go through that with the meter. Thanks, hon. I think we're good to go. Bye. Bye. Love you. All right. So I tested everything with my multimeter. Everything looks good. I haven't tested the heater yet. Let's see if the heater works. We'll turn it on. It hasn't run in a long time. My dad just gave it to me not too long ago. So let's get that going, and then we'll have heat in the shed. We should be good to go. Thanks, friends, for watching. Yeah, buddy. Oh, it's blowing dust out right in my face. Let's see if she heats up. I'm already feeling the heat. Let's wind her all the way up. You feel it? Do you feel it?